Before you begin the class, you want to know how to make a SOLIDWORKS course by HATSIP with certificate ministered by a teacher over 10 years of project experience and still can learn miscellaneous software and engineering concepts at a price the irising price and still may win free days in a very simple way. So click here on the video description link, I will explain to you the details how it works, guarantee that you will not repent and now stay with class, and do not forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and still if you want to leave a comment, this will help you to see more classes my and get more knowledge and now stay with the video. Good class. Hello my student, student of Infinity Projects Brazil, here is your engineer teacher Trago Lourenço Martins. In this video tutorial I will teach how to calculate a metal structure considering a weight of equipment in a certain region of the structure. For this we will have to create a new density for the equipment so that it will have the mass we want, which in this case will be 500 kilograms. Let's measure the equipment width, length and height to calculate the density. We take the measurements and throw them into an Excel spreadsheet to do the calculations so that we multiply the three measurements by meters and meters to get in cubic meters. After that just type in another cell the weight that you want in this case is 500 kilograms, and then in another cell type the formula. Equal to volume cell divided by cell of the desired weight. So we get our density in kg per cubic meter. Having the density found, in this case 251 kilograms per meter now let's create this new material with the new density in SOLIDWORKS. To do this, right click some material, then click copy, then right click again in a region without folders, and click new library. Name that library, and click OK. Made this new library, right click on it and click New Category. Give that category a name, and then right click on that category and paste. Edit the name of the new material and also the density that in the case it will be 251. After changing the material of the equipment, we see that it already has the mass we want, which in this case is 500 kilograms. Now let's visualize the center of gravity. Note that the center of gravity changes as we suppress the equipment 500 kg chiller, and when we suppress the center of gravity changes again. Let's now create a new simulation using as a principle the concept of mixed meshes, e-meshes with structural and solid designs. To start, we exclude Cutlist folder. We see that all components are already with their proper materials. 
which in this case are, 1060 aluminum check plate, 1020 steel frame and the chiller with the created material. If your parts are not material, you must choose the material of each part. For this simulation, the chiller does not want to study its behavior so that it deforms. We will use it only to have its mass in the desired region. So we have to treat it as rigid as I change by right clicking mouse over it and I click make it hard. Now let's fix the structural points that will be welded, in which case this whole face of the structure will be welded, so I click all these nodes to fix. Are you liking class? So help me get this class to reach more students like you. Leave your like in the video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell, so every new lesson I post will get you notification and share with your friends on your social networks. Now let's include gravity, which will consider everything in the drawing, including the 500 kg chiller. See that gravity is applied to the center of gravity. Now let's join the structural components with the solid components. This is very important to work with the mixed meshes, because it will show where they will support each other. For that right click on component contacts and then click on set of contacts. Change the type to instead of unpenetrated to united. Click beams. Then select all the beams that will support in our case the checkerboard and click OK. Repeat the process to join the chiller with the checkerboard. Now create the mesh and see that the chiller mesh will turn orange. This is because we treat it as rigid, e it will not be analyzed in the result, we will only use its mass. Now we click execute to calculate the structure. In this first result, presenting the tension only in the solid bodies, does not show the tension in the beams. Note that the maximum stress was 7.3 exponential 6 newton per square meter, e it did not exceed the yield limit which in the case of the checkerboard is 2.7 exponential 7 newton per square meter. E there will be no plastic deformation, is a deformation that the piece returns when removing the force. 
Let's see how to know the yield limit of each material. When we edit the material it has the yield limit. For AISI 1020 steel I have 3.5 exponential 8 newtons per square meter, whereas the A36 structural steel that is normally used is metal and has a flow limit of 2.5 exponential 8 newtons per square meter, and in this case aluminum Kimam 1060 has 2.7 exponential 7 newtons per square meter. The second shows how much everything will move, not only considering plastic displacement, but all buckling by weight even if it is in the elastic zone. The third graph will show how much plastic deformation there was, see that the number is extremely low, e there was no plastic deformation. Now let's insert the fourth graph, which will be used to analyze the tension in the beams, to do that right click on the result, then click on tension, and in definition switch to beams. Note that the maximum stress on the beams was 8.8 exponential 6 newtons per square meter almost 40 times less than the yield strength of 1020 steel which is 3.5 exponential 6 newtons per square meter, which is adequate and not will deform. Now let's do the same process to analyze the safety factor. See that the lowest value was 3.7 times, e the point with the least security is 3.7 times stronger than necessary.
issue a report of all analyzes performed in Word. You can issue this report to your supervisor and submit these reports to clearly show that your project is well sized, thus valuing their work in front of co-workers thus perhaps facilitating their possible promotion. I speak this from my own experience, as it has already benefited me in my career. I'd like to thank you for watching the whole class, and I'd like to invite you to enjoy this video, comment on what you think and if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel. This will help you see more SolidWorks video lessons of mine that I will still do, so you will gain more knowledge, making you an even more competitive professional in the job market. Thank you my students see you soon.